Excellent play from the Scotland midfield player. A chance for Johnston and Celtic are ahead. The Celtic fans delirious. Mo Johnston shows his tremendous value to pick up the snap chance. But that was down to the driving creative play of Paul McStay in midfield. Racing up the Celtic defence. Forcing the ball wide. Archdeacon played it across. Now Martin McLeod with a shooting chance. He didn't connect properly. And Johnston needs more. For a free kick for Celtic. Willie McStay will take it. Well won by Dave McKinnon, delaying his lack of inches for a simple defender. Archdeacon. Chance again for Celtic. Brian McLear. 2-0. 29 minutes of the first half gone. And Celtic make it two. And once again, it was created over on that far side where Archdeacon did so well. The cross came in, the Rangers defence was at sea. It had felt kindly for Brian McLear. And what... Johnston for Celtic. That's a fine pass to Barnes. A great chance for Celtic for the third. Brilliantly finished. 3 1 to Celtic. And if Barnes was the finisher this time, Mo Johnston was the creative genius. Oh, what a wonderful start to the second half for Celtic. Look at the pass from Johnston, stripping the Rangers defence. Barnes driving forward, keeping his head and steering the ball well wide of Nicky Walker. So it's Celtic again, coming more into the match. Mo Johnston taking on McPherson. McLeod! Mother McLeod makes it four apiece. The Rangers supporters are stunned and that came right out of the blue. Set up by Mo Johnston playing in square into the path of McLeod and there is a Mother McLeod special to tie the scores at four apiece. Well, if ever that justified the reorganisation of the Celtic ranks to put McLeod back into central midfield, that was the goal which made all the difference. Turning the ball away for the throw. Well, well, much of that first half was spent in midfield, the second half starting in goalmouth action. And there's the opener, Mo Johnston. Johnston at his best. Saluting the Celtic supporters at the beach end. Now this was a goal of the highest quality from a top-class striker. Taking the ball from the throw on the left, turning, easing his way inside, screening the ball from defenders and rifling the shot beyond Brian Gunn. McGrain with the throw. Johnston. Challenged in the end by Hamilton. But once again, Celtic have a corner kick. Oh, and Archdeacon again going across, taking them on both flanks for Celtic. Paul McGugan joining the Celtic attack. And a great header by Brian McLear. Six minutes gone, and McLear does it again for Celtic. Well, it couldn't have been simpler or more effective. In swinger from Archdeacon, McLear with a run towards the near post, a powerful header, and Stewart was left stranded. Well, what a start for Celtic. Ryan McLear, such a key man for them up front. McLear doing well, wrinkling the ball free to McStay. Here's Mo Johnston. It's there. Two minutes of the first half gone, and 2-0 to Celtic, and it was brilliantly set up by this pass from Paul McStay. Johnson with one thought in his head, racing in and goal, the power beats him through and Celtic are now two ahead. Let them do the rest. Have a 
Zombie into space, the drain, and a delicate ball to Mother McLeod. Here's Paul McStay. Finding Aiken. Now McGrain. Celtic in full cry now as McClare gets free on the right. There's Johnston. Absolutely magnificent. One of the goals of the season. Set up inside the Celtic half. The final ball from McGrain releasing Brian McClare. His pace. And the final pass to Johnston was perfect. And Stewart this time. Completely helpless. From me. McGrain. Not a McLeod. Barnes. No question about it. Celtic are certainly playing like champions. Barnes Deacon testing Tom Wilson. Makes his way to the byline. Here's Mother McLeod. Now McStay. 4-0 to Celtic. Trying to play Celtic offside, we failed. Here's Johnston, uh, Mother McLeod, McLeod. Nine minutes into the second half, five nil to Celtic, and that one certainly with a tinge of good fortune. Next day, beat the offside trap. Johnston hanging back, going forward, playing it back to McLeod. He tried a shot for goal, miscued completely. And McClare took advantage of the ball landing at his right knee. Mother McLeod has judged the pass. Brian Gallagher still on the ground after a challenge from McGugan. That's for Brian Hamilton. All running away from him, rather. So we'll have to start the build up again. Barnes is in the way. Brian Hamilton checked out of the foul on Tommy Burns very sensibly. Burns trying to pick up a run from Roy Johnston. And it's Johnston who's tackling Tim Stewart. That was a serious problem, I fear, for Brian Gallagher inside the centre circle. There's decent run striker. Never got up after the challenge from Paul McGugan in the air. It looked as though he landed awkwardly on that left ankle. Well, here's the incident which caused the problem. There's Gallagher going up. McGugan won it from him. There's Gallagher going down, stumbling awkwardly. And that's what did the damage. The stretcher has arrived, but the referee helping to carry Gallagher off. Well, a very sad sight always. Any player leaving the field in such circumstances. Complete accident, but it takes Brian Gallagher out of the match. And it's a very sad end to the season for him. It is Gardner Spears who's coming on. The big substitute is Gardner Spears left for Turned back by Aiken again to Bonner. The player's header picked up by Neil Cooper. And the major question, I think, here at Love Street on the field is whether or not the player or Johnston can get a hat trick. Splendid way to end the league season. Here's Tommy Barnes in space. And Johnston waiting in the middle. Couldn't get it beyond Jim Stewart. And it's come behind by Godfrey for the corner. Another beautiful 
fast forward. Bond sprinting into space, doing it against the legs of Stewart and turned behind by Godfrey. Back with Tom Wilson. Brian Hamilton's on the right flank. Trying to check in up inside Archdeacon. It's back with Wilson. The angled cross, a chance for St. Martin, and again it's Pat going up. He's got the spears with the header. Well, there was a flag up but offside, I think. But that doesn't detract in any way from the goalkeeping of Bonner. Wilson stepping inside Aiken. The angle cross, the header from up from Spears, for a save, didn't count in the end, but some um, great play from Bonner. And the applause greeting the early departure of Danny McGrain, the replacement is Peter Grant. Tremendous applause there for McGrain as he came off. Ball next day. Well, Stuart Minnie. Two bites. Now that must be a goal for Dundee. Here bedlam around the stadium. Well, you don't need to hear any more news than that. Dundee clearly have scored at tens. And let's lift off here at Cross Street. Oh, what incredible scenes. Celtic supporters rejoicing. Type on dramatic circumstances. How on earth do you feel? I think a miracle has happened today because after the season we've had, whereby we were a bit in different form, like, and then towards the end of about two months ago, we just played to hang in, like. But the players have been exceptional the last six weeks. No credit to the players for winning the championship. What on earth did you tell your players before today's game? Because they played in spectacular form, didn't yeah. they? First off, we felt that we could win there and get the goals to do it, like. But at half time, what I felt was we heard that Dundee were winning one nothing. I mean, there was a wee bit of lapse in the whole atmosphere here, but fortunately, Dundee got the two goals at the end. Could you honestly believe it was within your capabilities today to pull it off? Yes, and no, I felt we could do it, but we still had to hope for Harps to beat, and that happened. What about this support? They went mad at the full time whistle, didn't they? Well, no, just now. They're, they are the best in the land. I've always said this. They've supported us through the, the lean times this season, kept their faithful support going, and Please for them as much as for Celtic, the, the club. You're a quiet and assuming champ, David Hay. Will you have a, a bit of a party tonight? I'll have a few drinks, I think. Well done, well done. Thanks very much. And the celebrations continue despite the steady downpour of rain. None of these Celtic supporters have noticed the difference. And I'm sure the players feel exactly the same. Well, these are the happy scenes which looked impossible just about a week ago. But in a tremendous finish to the season, Celtic going 14 late games undefeated. They've come through in the end to win in the last 
worst possible day of the season with just minutes left when they got the news from Ben Spark about Dundee beating Hearts. The celebrations began, they've been going on ever since. The rain teeming down and the Celtic players now going right round the stadium in the lap of honour. And on the performance this afternoon, they're certainly worthy champions. At the moment, it's very hard to believe. They say all season we've been hanging in there, hanging in there. We said eight games ago, if we won eight out of eight, we thought we'd win the league. Well, we won eight out of eight. But I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a, it's a fairy tale. It's like a book. So it is. What about today? You needed to win by three clear goals. I mean, did you expect to score as many as five? We knew we had to get out and score goals. I mean, that, that, that's, that's what Celtic are best at, getting and scoring goals. I mean, it's, that's the point behind us. We couldn't feel he scored five. They went a bit quiet in the second half, waiting for the D to score. But what a roar from the D to score. Tremendous. Well done, Roy. This is mayhem. Mayhem. Bob McStay, Celtic have lifted the Premier League in the most dramatic circumstances. Can you believe it? I just can't believe it at all. I always knew we had a chance of winning it. No, Dundee did the job for us, but I was always a bit unpredictable. I knew we would go and beat St. Murray a few goals. We went and done it. We were backing these guys here. We have done it. And I'm just glad to say we won the championship. It's been unbelievable. What do you make of it? It's absolute chaos. Uh, it's mental, but I think they all deserve it. They do. It's their day. Their day. What are you going to do tonight, Paul? Uh, I think I'm going to have a wee drink. Maybe. I'll celebrate. Well done. Nice oh. Oh. What amazing scenes and what a remarkable match in our besieged report. Tommy Barnes going through. Still Barnes going all the way and he's brought down by Miller. Just outside the box. Miller thinks that Barnes dived. Well, if he did, it was thoroughly convincing. He appeared to me to be brought down by the Aberdeen skipper. But Barnes showing lots of confidence and control as he went through that ruck of Aberdeen players. Eventually brought down by Miller. Now, chances don't come any better from set pieces around the box. Dunn has lined up his wall, a huge one at that. McStay, McClare and McLeod all involved in the rehearsed move. Yes, McLeod. Yeah. The deflection. Yeah. And Celtic are back on level terms. The chance was always on from the free kick. Played shot by McStay, Father McLeod driving the ball into the rocket players, and the deflection left Brian Gunn with no chance at all. So David Hay and the Celtic dugout, thoroughly relieved, I've no doubt, to be back. Willie McStay. Aiken comes forward, so does Shepard. That's brilliant play by Celtic. McStay must be, he's done it. The equaliser. If ever a team deserved it at that stage was Celtic as Mo Johnston puts them back into this game. 22 minutes of the second half gone. A quite superb move by Celtic. Touch to the side, McStay, now watch this. Swing it in and Johnson side putting it. He didn't need to touch it again. Well, they seem dead and buried with all the problems that they had in defence. And now they're back... Absolutely right. Tremendous comeback by Celtic. Down to 10 men. Injury problems as well. And so after 90 minutes, one each, we went into extra time. And uh, after the 30-minute period in which Celtic were still the better side, they were still all square. And so it went to a penalty shootout. So, Roy Aiken is preparing to take the first penalty kick of the evening. And as he surveys his colleague from Mexico, Jim Layton, the Scottish international goalkeeper, one begins to think that this is the sporting equivalent of being on a very agonising rack. I don't know whether I would go first or last, but the captain, Roy Aiken, is attempting to show the way. And then it's saved. A brilliant save by Leighton. And I say brilliant in terms of his confidence. I think it wasn't nearly as well hit by Roy Aiken as it really ought to have been. 
Yes, far too straight towards the goalkeeper, although, as I said, he stood his line. The first Aberdeen penalty, jumped back. Very experienced campaigner indeed. Here he goes. One nothing to Aberdeen. They are one up. Sweeping it, and even the goal, the goalkeeper guessed the right direction. Now, Paul Johnson. One each and scores. 2-1 in terms of penalties. Bo Johnson made it look ridiculously simple. <laughs> now, John Hewitt. He scored many an important game, a goal in his career. The second Aberdeen penalty. He's missed it. Bonner right behind it. So, two penalties apiece, and the score is one each. The fine save, again by Bonner, not as well hit. Very much slightly higher than Aiken's penalty, but. Again, Tunia, the goalkeeper. Now, it probably doesn't pass through the player's head how expensive a miss is. And it goes from Grant. Celtic have taken the lead 2-1, but have that extra penalty at this moment. There it goes, very much like Mo Johnson's. 2-1 to Celtic. The very taciturn features of Peter Weir. Weir with it. 2-2. Two -two. Exactly the same number of penalties, one missed each, it's 2-2. Two -two from that lovely left-footed drift by Weir. And now we're down to the young players. Imagine having to replace it in a situation like this. Owen Archdeacon. Totally wrong-footed, a goalkeeper. 3-2 for Celtic. And now Willie Miller. The Aberdeen captain. Now, I recall this man missing a penalty in East Berlin. He was the best player on the night and he missed the penalty. He's missed it. Warner has saved. Celtic with a marvellous chance to go through. Much too deliberate with it. And the Celtic support rise. Brian Leclerc to put Celtic into the Skull Cup semi-final. And he's looking very cool about it too. Here he goes. There it goes. Celtic have done it. In the most dramatic fashion. They have played for a long spell with only 10 men. Pulled themselves back up the precipice. And in that dramatic finish have kept the nerve and the cool and given their supporters a very good excuse to go delirious for the rest of the night. Willie McStay. 
Oliver McLeod, inviting ball in David Nettie's behind that. And just coming in at the back to him, the very menacing form of Brian McClare. Oliver McLeod to take this. Up goes a big figure of McGuigan and it's in there. I think it was McClare who got it. Both McClare and Mo Johnson went for that. Not that the Celtic supporters are particularly caring. And that excellent start, three minutes gone. And who got the final touch? Both of the strikers went for it. It was a kind of cooperative effort. Well, pays your money, you take your choice, but I think McClear is quite...
second half. And a textbook header from Alan McAnally. Just introduced to the play. And we'll want to watch this one all over again. A short corner kick. Muddle McLeod with a change of pace to the byline. A superb outswinging cross to the far post. McAnally leaping to a great height to bullet the header in at the far corner. They're going up with Chisholm. There's McAnally again with space to attack Gordon Hunter. McLeod didn't reach it. Johnston did. No offside flag. And it's 5 1 to Celtic. Well, applause all around Celtic Park from the home supporters. But Alan McAnally now is staking his claim for a permanent place in the side. Found space on the right, racing forward, attacking Gordon Hunter, making towards the byline, driving the ball across goal. McLeod couldn't reach it, brought up into the air for Johnston. A precise nod of the head, and that's Celtic. I think he should be tucking himself further back off Archdeacon if he's going to be caught like that. Out of a cloud. And stay. Kennedy, and there's a beautiful goal by McLeod. So typical, breaking the deadlock and out of virtually nothing. I mean, how many balls have we seen already tonight like this? And it quickly caught good by the Motherwell defence, except on that one occasion, and that is all that that man needs. A man, in my estimation, who should certainly be included in Scotland's international squad for the next game. Hesitated, away go Motherwell again. Really playing well now, Manabal. White is still in play, although that was very slow by the fullback again, which he really has to part with the ball quicker. He had players on the left of him, and now Mo Johnson. There's a brilliant ball. Aiken goes in. Can he make it? He's done it. A brilliant goal. No wonder Johnson. Wants to embrace him. That was all the way down the park. It's as fine a goal as a defender can possibly score. Just when Mullerwell had taken the initiative, look at him calling out for the ball. Through it went. Impeccable pass, lovely timing. And I think it would have spoiled it if somebody had knocked that over the seconds away from penalties. There it is. It's going to be a penalty finish. And the first penalty in this rather dramatic evening will be taken by the Monable captain, Tom Boyd, the youngest captain in the Premier Division. It is both an agonising and exciting moment. There's so much at stake for these players in penalty finishes now. So much money in particular. The Skull Cup final beckons. Boy to take it. one nothing, Motherwell. An inspirational start by the captain. He's leading the way for the others as Motherwell go into a penalty lead. For Celtic, Brian McLean. And this is interesting, he looked very bad in the latter stages of the game as Brian McLean makes it one off. Now watch the reaction of the goalkeeper, he was totally wrong-footed. But he seemed to be not too badly put out by that, fall to the ground. And now, the man who scored the first goal for Monable, Andy Walker. Rather greasy suffers there. Everybody on edge. Walker to take this. 
2-1 for Manu. And that was done very confidently. I wouldn't swap his boots for anything, but look at that. Totally nervous. Morris Johnson, usually very good at this. 2-0, and acknowledges that loud roar of the Celtic supporters way down at the Kings Park end of that ground. Again, Gardner, totally wrong footed, 2-0. This is John Philibon for Monable. The boy originally was Sterling, and now Doncaster back to Hamden, and this. No goal. That was clearly missed on the side of the bar by Philogan. Now watch that miss. He really hammered it. And it came back out again. And Celtic now could take the lead. Derek White. 3 2 for Celtic. And all they need to do now is keep that lead. Sweeping it in confidently. And now Brian Wright, he knows his side are trailing. He's really got to put this one away. It's in. <laughs> A little sporting gesture to the Celtic supporters, you might say. That's three all, but of course Celtic have that advantage. A very good effort indeed by Bonner. I think the skid beat him. Paul McStay, who very rarely misses. Stay against Gardner. And it goes. And Celtic, nevertheless, at 4-3 on the verge of the Skull Cup final. Sweetly in by McStay. For Monoval, Steve Cut. And it goes. We're now 4 off. And Tommy Burns could put Celtic in the Skull Cup final with this one kick. That brought the scores level. It could be the final kick of the evening. Means a lot to Celtic and to Tommy Burns. There it is. And for the second tie in succession, Celtic have gone through on penalty deciders to the great delight of the fans and the players. And so Celtic go forward to the Skull Cup final on the 26th of October, which we are delighted to say will be seen live by viewers to BBC Scotland the whole of the Skull Cup final on Sunday 26th of October live on BBC Scotland where Celtic will be represented after that final penalty kick taken by Tommy Burns Tommy saying in a kind of way for us good night, see you in the Skull Cup away there by Brian Purdy good ball though that will be another corner kick Celtic support roaring them on now I thought 
that Roy Aiken might have gone forward for this himself, but he remains on the halfway line. All the others are in for this. Out of the crowd with it, and it's in. Roy Johnston. one nothing with eight minutes of the game remaining. Well, the little man who can get in there quickly and stab in the most unusual goals. He's a great six-yard box player, proving again just how deadly he can be in the pocket defence, and suddenly evaporated. Stay, covering every blade of grass here to try to take control of the match for Celtic. But finding it very difficult indeed. Does Willie McStay, now McInally. Second chance for McInally. Shepard. Johnston. That's the breakthrough. Five minutes into the second half, Mo Johnston collects his 13th goal of the season. But it was down to McInally who took that pass to Willie McStay. Then down to Tony Shepard who turned the shot well beyond money off the post. And there was Johnston with the easiest of tap ins. Well, I fancy the Celtic supporters are wondering where the opening goal. Shown to Pat Bonner. McInally's header. There's a chance on now for Tony Shepard, but McLeod took it away from him. There's McInally. Another fine deep cross. Body McLeod's there, so is McLeod. Superbly taken by Brian McLeod. But again, down to the crossing ability of Alan McInally. Ball taken by McLeod away from Shepard. Now just watch the way McInally makes space for a cross. Now this deep outswinger met by Mona McLeod. The header across the face of the goal. The easiest of tasks for Brian McLeod. Money had no chance at all. McLeod now to guide Hearts forward. Make certain at least they don't lose the match. Good ball from McLeod. Here's McLeod. Some running space for him. Jordan comes across. They're going all the way, there's Johnston! Oh, Johnston gets the opener, 18 minutes into the second half. Brian McLeod enjoying his freedom in the left, cutting inside, attacking the half defence, rifling in the shot, Henry Smith uh, sees the ball rebound, and there's the inevitable Mo Johnston to knock home the easy chance a moment the thunderous applause and well he deserves it tonight well that has been outstanding for Celtic several saves at vital times in the match keeping his goal intact there's McLear being allowed to come forward now oh, McAnally this must be the second for Celtic Penalty kick, I think, for handball. Penalty kick it is. Into time added on for stoppages. Uncertainty there in the Hearts defence. As Brian McClure sprinted through. Smith blocked the first effort. McInally dragged it wide. The shot was then handled on the line. So Brian McClure has missed his only effort in normal time this season against Falkirk. Clear against Smith. 2-0 to Celtic.